Welcome to the 8th episode of Takasoba with our review of Spice and Wolf. I'm Anime Casual Nate, joined with Anime Lover Malesh. Hey guys. Spice and Wolf is an interesting anime as it takes place in medieval-ish Europe, and most of the story focuses on the cutthroat life of a traveling merchant. This anime will actually teach you a bit about economics. It genuinely interests me the whole way, and I think the medieval setting brings out the more extreme and engaging scenarios that a merchant will find himself in. Spice and Wolf is a show that a lot of people in the anime community talk about, so to finally watch it, I finally understand what the actual hype is about. Who knew watching a cute wolf girl and a merchant would be a fun anime? Spice and Wolf has two seasons, the first one airing in the beginning of 2008, while the second one aired in 2009 at the Summer Times. The first season has 13 total episodes, while the second one has 12, but there is an episode 0 OVA that also comes along with it. While visiting a village home to a fabled wolf goddess of wheat growth, it turns out the goddess is actually real and she manages to sneak aboard Lawrence's carriage, where she eventually reveals herself as Hollow the Wise Wolf. Lawrence comes up with a partnership where he'll take care of all of her expenses as long as she eventually pays him back later. Thanks to Hollow's persuasiveness, she manages to get Lawrence to promise her to take her back to her home up north. This sets up for the rest of the show, where they go to various villages for business ventures while developing a slight romance. I like the pacing of the show, and the arcs are meaningful. The episodes ended well and often presented great suspense. For example, someone would burst through the room and reveal that major plans have fallen apart and Lawrence's life may be on the line. I was totally into it, even though every episode was about business in some way. However, I thought the ending to the show itself was a bit lackluster and I didn't much care for it. The light novel series of Spice and Wolf extend past the anime's ending and keep going, which means the anime's ending is open and non-resolute. The main characters are Kraft Lawrence, a merchant, and Hull, the wise wolf goddess of harvest. Both characters are opposites of each other, with Lawrence being a very mellow man that never shows his true emotions, while Holo is an arrogant girl that thinks of herself being better than literally everybody else. These conflicting personalities create a dynamic that eventually evolves into a romance. They say opposites attract, and Lawrence does indeed learn to love Holo due to the fact that he can never truly act like her. He also makes Holo consistently angry as Lawrence never shows his shoe colors to anybody. For the other characters, season 1 main star was Nora, who was an amusing, short romantic rival to Holo, which created a very amusing love triangle. However, Nora is forgotten in the next season, where are Marty and Ave, the secondary characters. I prefer these two over Nora, mainly due to the fact that they had more screen time, which made them a bit more memorable to me throughout this season. There are also additional characters like Mark and Diane, that I wish I was going to watch screen time because they were pretty cool. Personally, I had frustrations with Hola's character. I thought she was stubborn and moody. I often sided with Lawrence's grievances. I learned to like Hola less as the show went on, and became less engaged with the relationship between her and Lawrence. I don't think they were that good of a couple. Hola was too condescending and unappreciative, and both characters are poor at communicating and understanding one's inner motives. Although both Holo and Lawrence cared for each other in meaningful ways, I think their hearts were like two puzzle pieces that cannot fit. As for secondary characters, in the first half of season 1, no one left a lasting impression or contributed much. I thought Nora was acceptable in the end of season 1, but she was a minor plot point. In season 2, I was aggravated with Amarty, but he was well written to be a jerk. Towards the end of the show, Abe was the most significant secondary character, and she did a good job driving the final arc of the show. Now let's talk about the animation. Brains Base was a studio for animating both seasons. You may know them from shows like Durarara and Bakuno. While both of those shows had amazing animation, Spice and Wolf Season 1 in particular, it was very lackluster and nothing really that amazing. It was made in 2008, where they were still trying to figure out how to perfectly do digital drawn animation. Thankfully, though, the second season makes up for the first, as it looks noticeably better with more cleaner and crisp character designs. Overall, that brain space 
they did have a mixed job with the show. Poor scenes early on, but they were deemed so that the season two looking much better. I felt that the animation was lackluster, and I do think it has that mid-2000s awkwardness seen in some other animes. The facial proportions stuck out to me as being particularly mediocre, and scenes that were zoomed out around a lot of people were not given much animation detail. However, I thought the background art was pretty good. It did give the atmosphere of ambiguously classical Europe. Well, I actually think season 2 was like way better, but I didn't notice a dramatic improvement. I would say neither season is particularly bad, and the animation quality doesn't detract from the story at all. Character detail was definitely okay. Now we'll discuss the voice acting and soundtrack. As usual, I watched the English dub and I thought it was pretty good. J. Michael Tatum is an excellent voice actor and a favorite of mine, and he did well with the role of Kraft Lawrence. The character had a mostly calm and focused demeanor, but also shows rashness, and his acting exemplified the character's slightly egotistical nature. Brenda Palencia was the actress for Holo, and I haven't heard her other roles, but she agreed with Holo. She was perfectly pompous, condescending at times, and spoke with a very classical tone that fit Holo's old, wise, and stubborn nature. In the first half of season two, I thought a couple other voice actors were a bit meh, particularly that of Amarty and the Merchant Mark. The second half of season two was much better. Beyond that, the soundtrack was good and fitting for the period. I really enjoyed the season one opening, less so the season two opening, and didn't really care for the ending themes. The composer, Yoji Yoshino, did an excellent job creating a musical score I fit the classical theme for Spice and Wolf very well. His piece is really captured what it feels like to be at a village fair with a sense of danger when a plan goes wrong. I also enjoyed how well spring the tracks were throughout the show. Very rarely was there silence in the background. Voice acting wise, I watched both the dub and the sub and enjoyed both of them to the point where I'd actually alternate between the two with each episode. I love the Japanese voice actor for Holo. She did a really great job capturing her playful and arrogant tone. Though the English dub also did a great job voicing Holo, I give a slight edge to the Japanese voice actress. But when it came to Lawrence, I actually preferred the English voice actor as I felt he was perfect for the role. His Japanese one was good as well, but Lawrence's nature fits better with an English voice actor. As for the side characters, I also greatly hated Armari's voice actor, but beyond that, the dub also did a great job. For the opening endings, I never really cared about them. They fit well for the show, but they just never grabbed me. Overall, I'd still say Spice Wolf is a good anime. Although it's got some very visible flaws, it's got a very good story, which makes sense as it's based on a light novel series. You will learn economics, you will watch a 22 minute business deal, and it will not be boring. This isn't Wall Street, it's medieval times, and like I said there are some tense developments and occasional violence, and I felt engaged throughout both seasons. This show is a recommendation for me to anyone looking to an anime with such a setting and pace. Spice and Wolf reminded me a lot when I first watched The Millen Connolly of Hari Suzumiya, another often talked about show in the anime community, but when I finally saw both the shows, I enjoyed them. But it never really lived up to the hype. I did enjoy Spine and Wolf, especially throughout the second season, with its much more interesting arcs. And hey, who doesn't love cute wolf girls, am I right? You can watch the first season of Spice Wolf for free on Hulu and Funimation's website. However, season 2 requires a paid subscription on Funimation's website. Maybe you could find it for free somewhere else? Or you can buy the Blu-ray and DVD collection. As always, if you've already watched Spice and Wolf, click the first link in the description for a post-review discussion with some light spoilers. And thanks for watching our review of Spice and Wolf. Please give it a like or a comment for feedback, and we'll see you guys next time with the review of The Eccentric Family.